give the Lord a great big shout this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, would you just give somebody a hug in this place all over? If you're watching us by air today, just hug somebody and love somebody. I am so glad to see all of you guys here today. How about the Lord? Is he good or what? Yay! Praise ye the Lord. I feel the glory of God in this place, and I'm excited about what the Lord is doing in all of our hearts, in all of our lives. Hey, let's invite the Lord into his house. Can we do that today? Let's invite the Lord to take over this service, and let's ask him to speak to our hearts and speak to our lives and make us everything that he's designed and called us to be. So, Lord, today, we are so grateful. Come on, church. We are grateful. We are thankful, Lord. God, and our dependence is upon you. Lord, we recognize and realize that life is wholly about you, Lord. It's all about you. And so, Lord, we welcome you into this house today. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to fill this place with your great love, with your great mercy. Lord, would you fill this place with your grace and your compassion? Lord, I pray that those that don't know you, Lord, God, we're praying that you will save them today. Lord, that you will make yourself real in their hearts and in their lives. God, we pray for those that, that need to be delivered, God, from kind of, some kind of crazy stronghold, some kind of bondage, some kind of a addiction in their life, Lord, that you will do a miracle in their hearts and lives and deliver them. God, those that have been wounded and hurt, and that's all of us. God, that you will heal our broken hearts, that you will save us and set us free by the love and power of the living God. Now, Jesus, King Jesus, this is your house. This is your kingdom. We welcome you in this place, King Jesus, and we ask you to do great things in this house in the name of Jesus. And we promise we'll give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise for you alone are worthy. And we worship you and we adore you and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, Pastor Chris, give the Lord a great big shout. Oh, come on and give him a great big shout. Are you ready?
Hey, let's get our prayer leaders up here right now. We're going to pray for you. Any special prayer requests you have, make yourself welcome to get out of your seat. Let somebody pray for you. When I feel the Spirit of God in here this morning, God just wants you to know deep inside. He wants you to know and believe that He is God alone. That He's got this thing. Come on, He created you before your mother's womb. He has a plan for your life. And you are not a God created by human not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything you can get by your plan. That's just the way you are. You are not a God
You are not a God created by human hands. And you are not a God dependent on any mortal man. And you are not a God indeed of anything we can give. Come on, that's why we worship you, Lord. That's why we worship you, Lord.
said, consecrate yourselves to me. And you see amazing things. We need your revival, Holy Spirit fire, burning ever brighter in our souls. Kings and kings. Let me dedicate my life to you, Lord God, to worship you. Oh, and let this be a sacrifice. Let me dedicate my life to worship you. Let this be a sacrifice. Let me dedicate my life to worship you. Oh, let this be a 
your sacrifice let me dedicate my life to worship you I'm a lover of your praise lover of your praise I'm a lover of your praise I'm a lover of your praise lover of your praise Spirit of God here this morning. And I feel the Lord tugging on some hearts today. Somebody says, hey, it's my time to get saved. It's my time. It's my time to give my heart, my life to Jesus. It's my time to rededicate my life. If that's you, would you just raise your hand? The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. I see you. I see you. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. You need to get saved. You need to rededicate. I see you. I see you. Quickly, quickly. Now's the time. I see you. I see you. You need to get saved. You need to recommit your heart and your life to the Lord. If that's you, I don't want to take a bunch of time, but I want to pray with you. Would you just quickly get out of your seat and come here so I can pray for you? And God's going to do a miracle in your life. Quickly, quickly. Come on, you raised your hand for the Lord today. You need to rededicate your life. Quickly, come on from all over this place. Quickly, 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 quickly. 
quickly, here we come. They're coming. Come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Keep clapping for the glory of God. Could you sing that again? Yeah. Come on, the presence of God is just the presence of God calling you. It's all right. Come on. Here we go. I'm a lover of your presence, lover of your presence, I'm a lover of your presence. It's all I want to be. I'm a lover of your presence, a lover of your presence, a lover of your presence. It's all I want to be. And let this be a sacrifice. Let me dedicate my life to worship you. Let this be a sacrifice. Let me dedicate my life to worship you. Hey, would you just look at your neighbor right now and ask your neighbor if there's anything the Lord needs to forgive in their life? And if there is something, would you bring your neighbor up to the front? Quickly, turn to him right now. Is there anything Jesus needs to forgive you of? There is. Just come on up. Come on, all over this place. Come on, all over this place. Come on, here you come. They're coming from everywhere, all over. Make sure you bring them up. Here we go. Lover of your presence, lover of your presence, lover of your presence, so all I want to be. And let this be a sacrifice, let me dedicate my life to worship you. Let this be a sacrifice, let me dedicate my life to worship you. We are lovers of your presence, lovers of your presence, lovers of your presence. It's all we want to be. We are lovers of your presence, lovers of your presence. Lovers of your presence is all we want to be. We are lovers of your presence. Lovers of your presence. Lovers of your presence is all we want to be. Yeah. We love your presence and we surrender, Lord. We bow down at your feet. Let's pray all together as a congregation, those that have come forward. Let's pray with them. Just say, Lord, I ask you, be merciful unto me, a sinner. Lord, I ask you to remember me when you come into your paradise. I ask you, Lord, to save me, heal me, deliver me, set me free right now. I dedicate, I commit my heart to you, Lord Jesus. And I ask for you, your presence, your power, your glory to change me.
with the hat. Come here. Come here, hat girl. Come here. Yeah, you. Bring your friend. You bring your friend. Turn so people can see you. Yeah. What's going on? Uh, the Lord is merciful, I'll tell you that, because I'm here today. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you weeping? Uh, had a rough night and um, bags are packed. Our <laughs> our bags are packed and uh, we're here. So, thank you. <laughs> Take that, devil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What do you feel here today? What's going on in your heart, on the inside of you? What's what's happening? I'm just, I'm just so thankful. I've just, I've never, ever, ever, ever just been. Man, I'm so happy to be where I am right this minute. And like, yeah. I, just, I mean, every single thing I ever heard in my whole life about, you know, it's like Psh, whatever, whatever. And, it's been like 10 hundred fold since I got here and oh man I didn't want to leave so thank you Lord for your mercy and your grace thank you Jesus thank you for your forgiveness thank you Monica for your forgiveness what's going on Monica self <laughs> gotta stop worshiping self and worship the one who created you all of us have to get over ourselves. The problem with us humans is, is we all worship ourselves when we start out. But hopefully as we grow and mature, we will start worshiping the creator, the master, the sustainer, the, the God of the universe, God. So how many can say, God, help? Say, Lord, I really am a knucklehead and I can't do it by myself I've been trying all my life and it's not working out so now Lord I dedicate my life to you because I need you and I can't do it without you so now Lord I'm looking to your power to your strength by your presence Holy Spirit make yourself real to me right now close your eyes all across this congregation all across the world as you watch us today and say with me say Holy Spirit show me that you're real right now there he is you feel his love you feel his strength. You feel his peace. You feel his compassion. That's all you want is his presence. We need your revival, Holy 
spirit fire burning ever brighter in our soul kings and kingdoms falling hear your people calling king of kings we need a to try to go to another place in this service and kind of shift a gear. How many of you appreciate the presence and the love of God? Is he good? I'm going to ask you guys that have come forward to go sit down, but not for his will and purpose for your life. Go do something great for the kingdom of God with the fire of God. So sit during the service, but when service is over, you're entering into the mission field. Go love somebody and serve someone. Thank you, Lord. Is God good or what? Yeah, yeah. Woo, man, sakes. Shoot, you get lost all up in that, man. Man. How you even come out of all that? You know what I'm saying? Shoot. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> How about if we... Uh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Look, Jack, I was standing up here and he said, 
Holy Spirit, be real. And I was like, yeah, be real, Lord. And all of a sudden, my knees went, I went, oh, not that real, Lord. I'd be falling out up here. <laughs> Woo, shoot. How's everybody doing? Man, come on, come on, come on. Y'all are some beautiful people. I'm glad to see you this morning. Look to your neighbor and say, you look gorgeous this morning. And you smell good, too. You know that's a plus. Man, man, man. Look, I, I know we're going a little bit long, but I, I had a word in my spirit. Is it okay if I throw it out there right quick? There's a dude in the church. You know, he's probably five foot nothing, weighs probably 130 pounds soaking wet. But anytime anything goes down with him that don't plan out right or whatever, he's always got a positive confession comeback. You know what I'm saying? And in my eyes, that makes you 10 foot tall and bulletproof. And I feel like the enemy, let me just say something about the enemy of your soul, okay? He's been reading faces and playing people for many, many years, okay? But he is not God. He doesn't know the thoughts and intents of your heart. He doesn't know what you're thinking. The only way he can do that is if you, if you, if you put it out there. I really feel on my heart, God wants to get his people really into his word so that we can start confessing his word i'm not telling you to deny reality if you don't feel good if you got sickness in your body uh you, you having a hard time paying your bills that that that's true i'm not trying to deny that however we can counter that with the word of god and speak the word of god over our situations and you would be amazed at how it brings you out i taught our ladies in our, our women's ministry a couple of times ago uh, we took post-it notes. I said, go home and write out scripture, write out declarations of the word of God and speak it over your life. Put it on your mirror, put it in your car, everywhere and start speaking that word. It will transform your life. I got home and Miranda had put stuff all on the refrigerator. It's stainless steel, so it don't stick with a magnet. So she taped it, you know? So, so anyway, but that blessed my soul because she gets it. And I'm telling you, if you will do that, where you are today will not be where you'll be at later on. God will honor his word. He says, I honor my word above my name. That's pretty serious, man. Your word is your bond. So God honors it. If you will speak his word and declare it, he says, put me in remembrance of my word. Now it's going to take effort on your part. God will transform. Many of you got saved this morning, rededicated your hearts and lives. God did a supernatural work in your spirit. He did that. He put you on a level that you could never do for yourself, okay? He cleaned you up and made you new. Regardless of how you look or feel right this moment, something supernatural and spiritual happened in you. However, the Word of God says that we are to renew our minds daily. Okay, because we got a lot of stuff going on up here with the way we were raised, maybe a lot of critical thinking, a lot of negativity. Uh, maybe we've had some hard times. I call them life bombs, you know, uh, all kind of things that occur to us throughout the, our, our life growing up. People speaking things to us, rapes, molestations, different things that go on in our lives. Amen. And, and, and all that stuff is floating around up there, and the Holy Spirit wants to do something with that. He wants to clean you up and set you free from that mentality so that you can tap in to what God wants to do. But you got to tap into that, okay? You got to work the program, amen? amen? If you don't do it, you'll stay stuck. I stuck, mom, like my grandson last week. You'll be sitting there against the wall and you, and you can't move your little motor because you know you're not really stuck all you got to do is go two inches to the left and you'll be fine and God sees that so don't get overwhelmed man God's doing a great thing in your heart and in your life he said I'll never leave you nor forsake you God is for you I love that song because it speaks the positivity of God it says that the king is for you the king is among you He's not some far off God. He's a very near God. He's a very present help in a time of need. There's nothing you can do or say that would ever bring you from Him. The Word says what? That there's no height, nor depth, nor principality, no power, no nothing that can. Oh, y'all don't know the Word. There's nothing that can. There's nothing that can. Say it again. There's nothing. 
Walk that out then. Stop it. Grow up in the things of the Lord. He is for you. Those are elementary truths. Move forward. Stop focusing on you and staring at your belly button all the time. We got work to do. Lord, we love you. I pray that each and every person in here under the sound of my voice on television, internet, wherever it may ever go, I pray it will carry just as much power the day it's heard, Lord, that people will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you were real, that you were full of life and love, and that we are special to you. Help us, Lord God, to get our minds right and our confession straight, Lord. Lord, we surrender to you. Father, we call those things that are not as though they are according to your word. We do not deny reality, but we change reality by the confession of our mouth. We surrender to you this day, Lord God. You are good, good God, and you are faithful, and we love you, we honor you, and we serve you. Lord, be with your people. Touch them now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on. Hey. Man, if you had to leave in five minutes, you had church. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, we, got it. we got any guests up in the house today? If you would, just raise your hand and keep it up high for me. Raise your hand. Keep it up high. We got some, somebody coming to you with a card. Yep, here they come. Here they come. If you wouldn't mind, fill that out for us, and we're going to take our tithes and offerings in just a few minutes, and you can put it in the basket at that time. If you don't make it, if you're not complete yet, you, there's a, a table in between the double doors. You can set it on there, and our ushers will get it after service. Amen. To my right is our welcome center. We want to welcome you into the welcome center to come meet Bishop, and he just wants to shake your hand, see you, put your name to your face, and uh, get to know you a little bit. Won't take you all day. Like I like to say, the lines at the Piccadilly will die down by the time you get there. Does anybody even go to Piccadilly anymore? Maybe I should say Sammy's or McDonald's, right? Y'all can dig that. Y'all know where that is. But anyway, uh, we love you. We're very excited. We want to ask you that if you are local here and you're not part of a fellowship, that you would pray and see if this is where God would have you. Because if it is, we want you to be in the club. Amen? If it's not, we pray that God will help you to find where you do need to be because everybody needs to be connected. The Word says that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Why? Because it's encouraging. It's good to be with other people of like precious faith. Iron sharpens iron. We help one another. Amen? Can I get an amen? amen. Come on. I need to know I ain't up here by myself. That's right, that's right. All right, well, we're going to go to MPC 77 News. It's like our little commercial break, and we'll be right back. Get ready to jump into an ocean of fun at Ocean Commotion Vacation Bible School. Hello, this is Pastor Chris at Miracle Place Church here in Baker, Louisiana. I'm sitting here with some of the worship team, Andrew and Craig, and we'd like to say welcome and welcome to Miracle Place Church. And look, we want to extend an open invitation to you who may be called to, to be a worship leader. You know, God has called all of us to be worshipers, but some of us, I know he's called to be worship leaders. So we're opening our hearts and our doors to you, even if you don't come to church here on a regular basis. 
if you've got a calling on your life, if you play an instrument, we're going to have an audition, open audition on Saturday, July the 16th from 1 to 5, right here at the sanctuary. And if you need information, you can call 225-775-4321. Or we're going to put information on the website. You can contact us or fill out an application. But we want you to come and be part of our team if God's got a calling on your life. You know, God wants you to be all that you can be. And it just might be right here at Miracle Place Church. So we love you, and uh, God bless you. Church, I don't know about you, but man, we've experienced a mighty move from God this morning. Amen? Amen. And listen, I want to encourage you. Today is Missions Sunday. So if you would like to sow seed uh, to Vacation Bible uh, School, what we would like for you to do is earmark your uh, offering. And uh, we want to worship the Lord with our giving today. And before I do that, I just want to share something with you. You know... In what we experienced this morning with people coming up here and rededicating and giving their heart to the Lord, you've got to understand that that's the fields, that's the harvest, that's what's already ripe and ready to be harvested. But we as, you know, in service to God, we are those laborers that go out and, and reach the people that are in need of the salvation message. And to understand that there is healing, there is deliverance, and we talk about the kingdom culture here, Pastor Rick. And the kingdom culture is a, a set of values and attitude that this church has to increase the kingdom of God here on planet earth, just as it is in heaven here on planet earth. Come on, somebody. So I want to encourage you as we go to the scripture this morning. It's Ecclesiastes 5, 9, amplified. It says, moreover, the profit of the earth is for all. And the king himself is served by the field and in all, a king is an advantage to a land with cultivated fields. Oh, come on, man. Listen to this. We got to understand that King Jesus is the king of his kingdom. And we as laborers and what heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ, come on, somebody. We are laboring here on planet Earth to create the kingdom culture and reveal that to others so that the kingdom of heaven can manifest here on planet Earth. So I want to encourage you, as you give, King Jesus is not only what in this, but it is an advantage to us as we partner with him. Come on, because we are those cultivated fields. Father, we just give you glory and honor for the opportunity, Lord, to either sow into vacation Bible school, Father, or into your kingdom. So, Lord, we just lift this up before you. We tell you thank you for what you're doing and what you're yet to do. We honor you, we love you, and we trust you. Now, Father, give, we give you glory and honor and praise. Now, come on and give unto the Lord. Well, love is more than just a fact or a feeling. More than a kiss, a touch, a night, or a ting. There is much more than just a message from above. Because God is love. And it will all be alright Well I'm through with the devil If it's all I see No time for distraction I'm living in the glory
Come on, give the Lord another great big shout today. Praise the Lord. All right, if you got your handouts, you can go ahead and get them out. We're, um, we're talking to you about prayer, and uh, our sermon series is Why Pray? How many of you believe that it's important to pray? And so uh, last week, we talked to you about uh, the purpose of prayer. The purpose of prayer was acts, you remember, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. This week, we're talking to you about the power of prayer. The power of prayer, the acronym that I put together, uh, is peace, opportunity, wisdom, effectiveness, and readiness. Power. There's power in prayer. Can I get an amen? All right. So here we go. Um, so the first, uh, the first uh, P of, of power then is peace. How many of you believe it's important to have the peace of God? How valuable is peace? How many of you know that it's, it's priceless? That's exactly right. When you don't have peace in your heart and life, it doesn't matter how much money you got. Come on now. Nothing in this world matters when you don't have peace in your heart. And the Bible teaches us that when we pray, God gives us a supernatural prayer. And uh, here's uh, Joseph. Y'all remember Joseph with uh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh had had a troubling dream and had no peace in his life. He called all the devil worshipers, the soothsayers, and none of them could interpret the dream. But here comes Joseph, who had the spirit of the living God in him. And this is what Joseph said to Pharaoh. He says, it is not in me to give you the interpretation of the dream. But God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Come on now. He'll keep thee in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, Isaiah 26, 3. And I love Philippians. I'm just going to quote Philippians. He said, be anxious, be careful for nothing. By the way, uh, anxiety, it, it won't help you any. It's for nothing, right? So be careful for nothing, be anxious for nothing, for in everything, through prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will do what? Guard your heart and your mind. How many of you know the peace of God will guard you? Are y'all out there? Let's keep moving. The Lord is called the Lord of peace himself, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Verse 16, now the Lord of peace himself, shout somebody, will give you peace always and by all means, and the Lord be with you all. Can I just speak the peace of God on you right now? Lord, I release your peace. You are the Prince of Peace. I release your peace into your people right now in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that everything is going to be all right. God is going to work it out. You are all right. God is taking care of you. Jesus says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you will have peace, or you might have peace. He says, might, I believe, because you're a free mortal agent, and you have to choose to receive God's peace. Can I get an amen? Thank you, Lord. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace, and in the world that you'll know that you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, because I, Jesus, have overcome the world shout somebody so so we receive peace the power of prayer first thing is we pray because when we pray God gives us confidence he gives us comfort and he lets us know that he's going to take care of us everything's going to be all right so he brings a peace in our life come on the power of prayer brings peace in our life next is opportunity Whatever God is and represents is the power of your prayer. Think about that. When you pray to God, whatever He is and whatever He has is yours. Imagine that. The Bible says that the Lord opens doors of opportunity. And we see this in Paul's life. He says, For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you 
if, if the Lord permit. And then he says this. He says, For a great door and effectual door is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. How many of you know that God is going to open up doors for you? He's going to open up opportunities for you. So as you pray to God, the Owen powers for opportunity. God gives us opportunity. God opens up effectual, fervent doors for us. Furthermore, when I came to you in Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord. Shout somebody. Lord, I need you to open doors for me. I, Lord, you're the opportunist God. You're going to make an opportunity for me. I'm going to prosper. I'm going to succeed, Lord, because you are giving me opportunity. Can I get an amen? amen. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians, uh, Corinthians, uh, Corinthians, help me, Jesus, I had no rest in my spirit because I found not Titus, my brother, when I came. But taking my leave of them, I went from there to Macedonia. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and makes manifest the Savior of His knowledge by us in every place. Shout somebody. I mean, the Lord's going to cause us to triumph. Paul even requested prayer for more opportunities to avail in Colossians 4.2. And we're going to keep moving. Uh, continuing prayer. <laughs> we'll backtrack. And watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all, praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. Uh, just to say this one more time, that God is the great God of opportunity, and that God will always open up doors of opportunity for us as we consecrate ourselves to him and pray to him so when we need power and strength we can pray god strengthen us in our inner man by the holy spirit are y'all out there <laughs> that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his holy spirit in the inner man how many of you know you can't do anything without the strength of the lord in the inner man so when we need boldness, confidence, we pray like the apostles prayed. And how did they pray? And now, Lord God, behold their threatenings and grant unto your servants that with all boldness we may speak thy word. Are y'all out there? So God grants us boldness and strength. And he says this, by stretching forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy child, Jesus Christ. Are y'all out there? The Lord will empower us. The Lord will strengthen us. The Lord will use us for his glory. And when they had prayed, the place was, the place was shaken. All right. Where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Shout somebody. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Give God glory in this place. You know, I was thinking about um, opportunity, and uh, this is really where I wanted to get today. You know, I have certain places in my message that I always want to key in on, and this is, this is it right here. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they really teach us by trusting in God. He will turn any situation, no matter how bad it seems, into an amazing opportunity for God. Even what seems to be bad, God will deliver you and God will promote you. Now just thinking about Meshach, and, uh, Meshach Shadrach, and Abednego. We saw in, in uh, Daniel chapter uh, 4 last week where Daniel, you, you remember, uh, was it 4? I don't know if it was 4, but Daniel was cast in the lion's den. Do y'all remember? The name Daniel means that God is my judge. And true to Daniel's name, Daniel never caved in to God being his God. In other words, he wouldn't bow down. 
They said that they were going to throw him in the lion's den, and he says, I'm going to keep praying openly in front of the public, whether you throw me in the lion's den or not. I'm not going to act like I'm praying to um, some other God, and I'm really praying to the true and living God. I'm not going to fake it. I am what I am because God is my judge, and if you do put me in the lion's den, so be it. Now, listen, very important because, listen, there's one of two ways you make a decision in your life. You either make a decision based on pressure on the outside where people are pressuring you. And then you check the wind to see which way what the powers that be. And then uh, and you, you talk about things that you know people want to hear. Or you make a decision based on principle and conviction that comes from here. So one of two ways you make a decision. And what I love about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, and Daniel is, is these guys were not swayed by political pressures. They were not swayed by pressure even to the place where they would lose their life. They believed in God to such an extent that their conviction was greater than the pressure on the outside. We got to get to the place. We got to get to the place where we really are the real deal. We got to get to the place where we have more conviction and we believe more in God in principle than we can be swayed on the outside by pressures that are pushing against us and, and I think that that is one of the greatest lessons that we can learn today in this service is that we have to make our minds up guys that we is what we is and we're going to be what we are and we refuse to bow to any kind of pressure on the outside when it comes to principle on the inside. I'm going to stand for God no matter what. I'm going to live for you, God. God, I love you more than man. I'm a God pleaser, not a man pleaser. I'm going to live for God. I'm sold out for God. I love God more than anything in the world. And we got to get to that place. And amazingly, when you have that principle and that conviction in God, God is going to actually promote you. Now, it doesn't mean that you won't go through a little something, something. But even the bad will turn into good. Because God will use your trials and your tribulations to prove you, to prove your faith. And that's how you grow. You will never be what God wants you to be unless you go through some fire. The fire is good. You will never know who God really is till God really delivers you. You'll never know God really heals till God heals you. You'll never know God is the God of salvation till He saves you. You'll never know God. You'll never know him until he does something great for you. I'm telling you, I wouldn't know God if I wouldn't have got busted. David said, it is good that the Lord has afflicted me. Solomon wrote in Proverbs, the faithful are the wounds of a friend. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. <coughs> faithful was the night <laughs> that went in my back. <laughs> and before I recovered from that one, I got hit over on the other side by, by one of my other friends. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they answered, they said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. 
Because here's the, here's the story. Nebuchadnezzar had erected a gold image of himself. How many of you know he was full of himself? How many of you know Nebuchadnezzar worshipped himself? He thought he was God and all of that and a bag of potato chips, ice cream too. He thought he was all of it. And so he builds this, this statue built out of gold of his image. It's 90 feet tall. What would it take in gold to do that? It's nine feet wide. And he makes a declaration to the whole nation that when you hear their music, bow down and worship King Nebuchadnezzar because he's the great king of Babylon. And, and so... And so he sent this declaration. So he calls all of the governors of his nation. He calls all the sheriffs and all the counselors and even all the lay people, the constituents of the nation. And he brings them all together and he's worshiping himself. Here's the picture millions of people are before this, this, this statue. And when the music sounds, the whole nation. Imagine you're a leader and you got to show up at this political party where this king is worshiping himself and now you got to worship him. Can you imagine that? And guess what? Oh, we don't want to lose our head. We don't want to lose our job, our position. Better get down. You're the common politician. Just go ahead and get down. We know where you're at anyhow. Oh, yeah. And so here's what happens. Everybody is together. The music sounds. The whole nation, all the leaders, poor leaders, I feel sorry for you. You have no backbone. They all hit the ground. But the problem was is there was three still standing. It was Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. And the Chaldeans that were in leadership because Babylon had conquered many different nations. And when he brought the nations in, the best of the people, meaning that the business people and the doctors and the attorneys and all them, uh, the, 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 the governors, the king would actually put them in his kingdom and put them over providences and duties that he gave them in his nation. And so, and so, uh, what happened was, is the Chaldeans were a people that Nebuchadnezzar had conquered, but they were jealous of the Jewish people, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. So when they saw Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego still standing, guess what they did? Because they wanted their position. How many of you know the higher you get, the more crabs are trying to pull you down in the crab ministry? Every time you start climbing, <laughs> y'all got it. So, so now the Chaldeans go tell Nebuchadnezzar that there's three that are not bowing down to you, king. Man, and here's a king. It's the whole doggone nation, and there's three little Jewish guys. And out of all your responsibilities and everything you do, now you got to call them in on the carpet yourself. I'm telling you. Yeah, but I'm telling you what, that's when you know that it's past um, some kind of accomplishment in your life. That's when you know that you are really full of yourself when you got to attack three little old Jewish people. Are y'all out there? I don't know what we have on that side, but I'll get on this side. <laughs> what would cause a great king like that to attack three Jewish, three little Jewish guys because they wouldn't bow down to him? And so that's when they said that we're not careful to answer you. You know what they did? They said, we don't have any kind of response for you. We're going to keep our mouth shut. You do whatever you got to do. We ain't going to defend ourselves. We're telling you right now that we ain't bowing down to you. We don't care if you put us in the fire or not. We ain't bowing down to you. 
And then they said, they said, if it be so, our God whom we serve, he's able. He's able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand. You, you know what they were saying? They were saying, hey, king, our God is able. And he will deliver us one way or another. But if he says no now, he's still God. If he says yes, he's still God. We're going to serve God whether he says yes, I'll deliver you right now or not. Whether he delivers us or not, we know that he's still God and he will deliver us. If our spirit jumps out of our body and we go to heaven right now, our God is still God. You're not God. We would never bow down to you. We would never worship you. We don't believe in worshiping gold. We worship the God who created gold. We worship the one that created you. They said, we're not careful to answer you. We ain't talking. They said, but if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. We have principle in our heart. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury and, 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 and the form of his, uh, in other words, his face changed. Sometimes I tell Jenny, your face is not looking right. Was changed against Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. Therefore he spoke. What did he say? And he commanded that they should heat the fiery furnace seven times more than it was ever heated. Are y'all out there? I, what in the heck is this powerful king doing chasing three Jewish? You know what? It had passed monetary materialistic possessions. And it had become more than just power. Now it had to be total domination. Can I tell you that you will never be satisfied in your life without God. You'll always need another car. You'll always need another house. You'll always need another something else, man. Because the world can't satisfy you. You done conquered the whole world. You got everything you want. You're a billionaire. Not a trillionaire. In some kind of way, you're still not satisfied. Do you know why? Because the world can't give you fulfillment. The world can't give you satisfaction. That's only found in one place. And Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego had found what life was about. It was about serving God and worshiping the true God. And now they were fulfilled. And now they're standing in front of this billionaire. And then he's got pride. He ain't got no peace. He's got problems. You know, when you got God, you don't have no problems. Because he meets every need. And so now he had to heat this doggone fiery furnace. And he had to do it seven times more than it had ever been heated because he was so mad. Listen, seven times overheated the furnace represented how many times he was overheated with the, with the anger that was boiling within him seven times. Because he couldn't get three guys to bow down to him. Hey, can I tell you that there's one thing that nobody can ever take from you? And that's your will. They may can cage you. They may can handcuff you and lock you up. They may put you in front of the uh, firing squad. They may crucify you. But they can't take your will away from you unless you give it to them. Can I tell you, don't you ever give your will up. You don't ever give your will up to anything except God. Not my will, but your will be done. My will and your will are one. And so he commanded the most mighty men in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. And then these men were bound in their coats and, 
and, uh, and their hats and other garments, and they were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace was exceedingly hot, the flames of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Imagine this, throwing them in. The ones that threw them in burned to death. Can I tell you when your enemy tries to burn you, the trap he sets for you is the trap that he falls in himself. I've seen it over and over. That's how you learn all those scriptures, man, when you see that happen. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished. And he rose up in haste quickly and spoke and said unto his counselors, you do need some advice right now, king. Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they answered and said to the king, yes, sir. Yes, true, king. You little yes, men. And he answered and said, lo, I see, wait, I see four down there loose. They're walking in the midst of the fire and laughing and cutting up and giving high fives. And none of them are hurt. And the form of the fourth one, wait a minute, he's starting to preach now. He looks like the Son of God. What? Now you tell me how a doggone heathen sees Jesus. All of a sudden, he looks like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar, I mean, you know he's starting to get it came near to the mouth of the burning, fiery furnace. He spoke, and he started talking to them. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, shout somebody. Come on out of there. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire. And, and the princes and the governors and the captains and the kings and the counselors being gathered together saw these men. Come on now. Listen, what happened at, the, at his own worship service, Nebuchadnezzar, all, the whole nation is there. Everybody is there. And they watched them throw Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. This is like a, 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 a national TV show where everybody in the nation is watching this. It's a perfect opportunity for God to show off. Because someone stood on principle rather than pressure. Somebody was willing to take an opportunity. Man, opportunities don't always look like all of that. Sometimes opportunities look like. And he said... Um, he says that the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head sins, neither were their coats. The coats didn't even burn, nor did they even smell like fire that, that had passed on them. Are y'all out there? And Nebuchadnezzar spoke, said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his service, who trusted in him. Are y'all out there? And has changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Are y'all out there? Therefore I make a decree, says Nebuchadnezzar, that every people, nation, and language would speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a bunch of doo-doo. Because there is no other God that can deliver after this sword. Are y'all out there? Then the king. How many of you know that as soon as you face Goliath or your giant in life, promotion comes after it? Because you can't go to the next level in life till you pass the test at this level. Every level. Listen, how many of you know every level that you do on Game Boy? Come on. I may be dating myself. That's when my kids had Game Boy. I don't know what they got now. How many of you know levels? 
What happens if you don't make it through the level? If you don't pass that level? If you don't conquer that level? You get to try it again, right? Game over. <laughs> then the king promoted. Look at your neighbor and say, promote it. Say, neighbor, God is just about to promote you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Take that, devil. Come on, Miss Marble. Praise the Lord. So here's the last two, uh, three letters of our acronym. Um, and I'm just going to quote this real quick because we got to get out of here. You got all the notes. Guys, I always give you plenty of notes and plenty of scriptures. And I know all of y'all read those too. The, the ones I don't go over, I know all of y'all y'all read those. Um, but uh, we pray and, and God gives us peace. God gives us opportunity. Opportunity sometimes doesn't come like we think that it'll come. Sometimes opportunity is disguised into a serious, serious trial or tribulation. Um, but nevertheless, we don't have any problems. It's only an opportunity. In the Lord, it's only opportunity. Can I get an amen? amen. After, a, after you go through your test and you overcome that level, you get to go to the next level. You get promoted. So he gives you peace. He, he gives you opportunity, open doors of opportunity. W is for wisdom. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally and upbraidedly not, and it shall be given. James 1, 5. So when we lack wisdom, God gives wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8 talks about wisdom being with God from the beginning of the creation of the universe. Meaning that I, wisdom, was beside God. And, and, and those that love me, love life. And those that hate me, uh, hate life. So, so wisdom is more than just some kind of ability to apply knowledge to your life. Wisdom is a person, Jesus. When you pray to God, the wisdom of Christ comes in you. The person of Christ comes into your life. So wisdom becomes a pulling force. And I'm not saying that, that God is a force. I'm saying he's a person. But what I'm saying is, is you have power. There's a force of power. The wisdom of God is more than some knowledge. The wisdom of God is a person working for you. In other words, the favor and blessing of God works on your behalf. The wisdom of God is past knowledge. It's a person. Jesus, I don't have time to talk about that anymore. And the next thing is E, which is effectiveness. The, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. James 5, 16 and 17. And so when we pray, God makes us effective. When we pray, we put grease on the barrens. It runs right. Without prayer. And then it crashes, right? It gets hot. The barons get hot. Then the ladies are saying, what is he talking about? I'm talking to the men for a second. So that, that's how that works. And the last is R, P-O-W-E-R. The last is R, which when you pray, God makes you ready. Until you pray, you ain't ready. Sandy, if y'all have had enough. Let's, let's pray. Come on, give the Lord a great big shout in this place. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with this. I was reading about a man that had a, a little son, and it was uh, during World War I, and he um, signed up to go fight in the war. And um, when he got in, in battle, his son was about two or three years old, and he wrote a letter to his son. He asked his wife, to make sure that she read it to him when he was old enough to understand. And this is what he said. He was in the foxhole in the heat of the battle. He said, don't pray for daddy's safety. Pray that daddy will be confident and bold and strong and that when I have something to do, that God will give me the strength to do it. 
He said, Daddy dead, Daddy still. Don't pray for life. Don't pray for, for life or death. Pray that God will be honored through all the decisions that I make. He said this. And I thought about this because it took me a little bit. How I many you know you got to think? He said, Daddy dead, Daddy still. Daddy dead, Daddy still. What he was saying was, was if I honor God with my life and do what God has called me to do, and whether daddy lives or dies, daddy's still. Daddy is still living. Daddy is still alive. The purpose of life wasn't if I live or die. The purpose of life is would I live an honorable life and serve God with all my heart. Pray that I'll do that. Because daddy dead, daddy still. No matter what happens in my life, if I live by principle rather than pressure, if I bring glory and honor to God, daddy dead, daddy still. Father, I pray for courage today. I pray for your strength. pray, Lord, that you will make us all men and women of principle, conviction. I pray that all of us will have backbone and we'll be strong enough to stand for our great God. Like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, Lord. God, when the, what the enemy meant with, for harm, you will turn it around for good and even give us a promotion in the midst of it, God. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that even our enemies that come out against us, Lord, are really our friends, God, because you're using our enemies to do something extraordinary within us. You're even teaching us how good and great you are as we are attacked by our enemies, God, and we see your goodness and your favor and your blessing and your glory, God. Lord, it gives us faith and strength, it gives us maturity, it teaches us who you are. So, Lord, I pray for our people, not that you will deliver them, but that you will give them faith to endure. I pray for their faith not to fail. I pray, Lord, that they will be strong and mighty for you and for your glory and for your kingdom. I pray, Lord, that you will use your people. You'll strengthen them in their inner man that you'll make them everything that you've called and created them to be, Father. And I thank you for this great church and this great people. And I pray that you help all of us, God. Honor you always in the name of Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a great big shout in this place. Hey, we love all of you guys. Y'all have a great, great, great day. We love you.